that you could easily just cite people, give them a court date or whatever, and move on. It's less resources. And, you know, there there is real crime in this community, and I'd like to see some of that stuff dealt with, like child sex trafficking and other stuff. I'd like to see the police running active sting operations at the Lloyd Center Mall and all these malls where there's a predatorial pimps looking for prey and that is going on in this community and I, I think that the police there's not a shortage of police officers it's where the policing is being directed and what's being done and you know a lot of the, a lot of the problems with the police is waste not it's a waste of resources and they shouldn't be dealing with the homeless people really too much like maybe the city maybe the city could form a separate team that isn't like involved with central city concern because they're obviously just a wing of the portland business alliance and the business community and actually do more meaningful stuff you know and all these zombie houses why not go out and talk to some homeless people and see what kind of resources they have there's lots of uh, i mean there was a building boom and then it kind of went bust in this country and so there's a lot of uh, carpenters and skilled labor out there that are homeless that could actually go and rehab houses and you could maybe make them partnerships in a bunch of zombie houses or other things or give some zombie houses to some community organizations there i mean there's all kinds of stuff that people can do that are progressive but i just don't see much of it being done you know can i ask you a quick question uh, some of these meetings and i've noticed that a lot of times the people that are running the meetings sometimes will focus on you because you say, hey, I'd like to have a little bit more time to finish what I'm trying to say. They counter back and say, absolutely not. You need to sit down. If they would have allowed you, like said, I'm going to break the rules today and allow you another minute since you have some additional information. Do you think that meeting would have kept going forward and continue to go? Um, yeah, I do actually, and people like Dan Handelman and other people are actually given extra time all the time, so it's not, it, it's a selective uh, thing. It's just kind of a selective situation, so, mm -hmm. so fair enough, so sometimes that little additional time and being reasonable with all party makes a big difference there. Can yeah, I? I mean, even, I gotta, right. I gotta say, you know, like, I usually, I usually don't praise Charlie Hales that much, you know, but he, he actually has uh, learned to deal with activists a little better, and you don't just, like, you kind of allow people more space to be activists and to uh, give a little more dissenting opinions, and you don't run them off or, you know, I know a lot of that's part of the Joe Walsh decision, but... Um, Basically, you know, if if Kathleen Sadat would have handled the meeting even as good as Charlie Harris does, then this wouldn't have been an issue, you know. So, so I want to point out that uh, um, I have something to say, kind of following up. Um, one thing I noticed from observing the Barry Stull arrest from a distance, I rewatched and rewatched the the footage. What I understood is that he was under the impression that he had signed up for his three-minute speaking slot, his name was in the newspaper, his name was on the website, and on the agenda. So when the security guard, Michael Cohen, approached him to sort of micromanage him, like maybe his, his uh, belongings were in disarray, or wh however it started, it ended up go moving towards an exclusion, and I have previously, I like Michael Cohen, and I feel like he likes me. Maybe he even has a little bit of a crush on me. We have some kind of way we click. He's helped me before when uh, my girlfriend's uh, violent ex was chasing her around. So he, he's good when you need him. But I saw his aggressive policing tactics on Barry Joe to put Barry Joe in this point of cognitive dissonance, like, but I'm the featured act. I'm, my name's on the marquee. What do you mean I can't be here? 
So when he's having this cognitive dissonance about, but I'm registered to speak, how can you say I'm not allowed to speak? I have previously seen with the suicide victim Michelle Munch, supposedly suicide, she was also strangled by her ex Richard Munch, who lives out in Southeast Portland frequently, but um, supposedly homicide detective uh, Mr. Oster, I think, Richard Oster thinks it really was suicide, but the, um, she was bullied by Michael Cohen repeatedly, and she was like, yay high, maybe less than 90 pounds, and Michael, as we know, is gigantic, with gigantic shoulders, and he was unaware of his size differential, like Ben Pickering would be to me. He'd do like a sort of chasing her around, standing over her like he did to, to Laura Vanderlyn. And what large size security detail men need to know is their size is always a threat. Even say Joe, Barry Joe Stoll, who's more moderate, smaller stature, he might have started to feel that size differential of the gigantic seven-foot guy menacing with his shoulders, starting to micromanage. And I, I was really upset at this interaction with Mr. West, where they, um, I forget his name, something, Paolozzo or something, he's ripping at his camera. That's when I jump up and go patrol procedure, because I took patrol procedure with retired LAPD, and I'm like, that's not how you do it. You don't start grabbing people's cameras and dragging them like a cat with a ball of yarn. That was just very improper. Makes the city look bad. And I'm not saying Michael is a bad guy, that Michael needs to be fired. There are other people like Larry O'Day who I, I beg to differ on that. But um, with Michael, I think he needs some counseling to have a sensitivity training of what it's like to be this gigantic size and what it's like to be small. Because numerous times when he was harassing Michelle Munch, God love her soul, rest in peace, I interacted, and the way Michael acknowledged me is he said, oh, thank you for de-escalating Michelle. But what he didn't realize is that I was de-escalating him, because he was out of line, he was harassing her, he was like a cat and mouse with her, and I think when he got into that mode with Barry, I wish I could have been there, because I could have said, Michael, mind your manners, kind of like big sister Mary, mind your manners, go sit down, be polite, leave Barry alone, he's on the bill to speak. That's all we needed. Barry could have given his long three-minute speech that we've heard it all a million times. I like Barry having his freedom of speech. He didn't need to be arrested. He didn't need to be incarcerated. It didn't need to be a security incident. If Barry is happy with helping you guys train through your training problems, maybe he'll view it as community service. But I don't think it was fair. I think it made the city look very insensitive. Maybe I'm a little foolhardy. Maybe I think I can solve everything and run straight into the fire because that's kind of how I felt about it is that there was just a lack of critical thinking in terms of the security incident where somebody was allowed to gaslight and punitize and harass somebody to a breaking point. Then everybody gets to say, oh, look at Barry, he's mentally ill. And I, I saw something different. I see that Michael bullied him to a breaking point, which was completely unprofessional, completely unnecessary, made the city look bad. And, and it, it, nobody looks good. It's not a win-win. So I think that kind of incident, we could have a way of smoothly, like, you know, smoothing down that conflict. And I had two other things which were that I want a brain injury training. I talked to Bennett Omalu behind the uh, concussion film with Will Smith. I want him to come to Portland and teach chronic traumatic encephalopathy. He's fabulous. And then um, the Brain Injury Alliance of Oregon would like to do a training with the Portland police. And I neighbors with her the vice president of it. So, so like, she's game for that. And then also, I guess I'll be maybe dwelling on it tomorrow at my little speech for three minutes, but the Lindsay Hunt and Rachel Andrews cases, there were issues with women in policing, uh, women with neo-Nazis, women with sexual harassment, women with chain of command, women with communication styles. This terrible Rachel Andrew lawsuit involved a sexual harassment issue with male masturbation hand gestures provided by the Portland police, where the women were so expected to communicate in this sign language of male masturbation, yet they were punitized and given a double standard about their participating in it. So this Rachel Andrew case, we cannot delve too deep into this. And I brought it up to Ms. Kafori. I was very disappointed with her for whitewashing Rachel Andrew's case in terms of Mike Reese's bungling of that. And then the Lindsay Hunt case is on a uh, Hardesty blog, uh, Hunt Lessons Learned, and it deals with rookie lady cops reporting misconduct, falsification of records, destruction of evidence, like lied use of force incident report writing, 
really horrendous case. It really opened a window to how women are facing a lot of extra struggle when it comes to their being whistleblowers and them often having a very good heart in wanting to serve their community, being pushed down at every level. Thanks, Mary. Can I just uh, add something real fast? I, I know you're busy. I, no, I, I, I wanted to just ask.